hell happened to me? Jumpy, are you all right? Hey, what are you two doing? Come on, aren't you coming? What do you mean to do to us? Try using your brain first. All of the cards are in hand. Holy shit, this is nuts. Let me show you. Friendly. Hold on a minute. That is the truth. Who am I? How can I forget? Well, how do I take it and off? What makes you so sure? Oh, hello. Using your brain first. All of the cards are in. Oh, holy shit, this is nuts. Let me show you. How are you feeling? I am Zero the Third, the king of this kingdom! I'm plenty friendly. Hold on a minute. That is the truth. Who am I? How can I forget? Well, how do I take it what off? What makes you so sure? Oh, hello.
Ram Zero the Third, the king of this kingdom! I'm plenty friendly. Hold on a minute! That is the truth. Who am I? How can I forget? Then how do I keep it off? What all? makes you so sure? Hello?
Howdy, I am here. Oh god, I want me to turn myself down. There we go. Alright. A few things. I got stream elements up. And I finally got my donating thing up. So, let me see if it works. I might have to refix it if it does it. Yep, there we go. Oh, whoops, I did it twice. Well, uh, there you go. You guys can... Donate whenever. Only if you can. You're not obligated. Oh, God, that's loud. My ears are ringing. Oh, my God, yeah, new Xbox. I forgot about this shit. There we go. Oh, my ears. I got a new Xbox tool. So hopefully I don't get that static. But if I do, apologies. Oh yeah, let me like... Hold uh, on, I'm still trying to find a happy medium with this shit. There we go. Okay, maybe I'm gonna add a little sound for my headphones. So, in case I miss something. There we go. I am continuing this game. And I'm trying to get to the true ending. But apparently there's a bunch of endings in this. And I believe. I believe that I don't know if I can get to the true ending. Because I believe there is an ending I need to get before it. So this is going to be a fun one. But here we go. Continuing on. Yes. Loading. Complete. Resume in game. So I'm gonna go down and check it out. You stay here, alright? Um, but... Come on, just do it, alright? We give Joan children a reassuring squeeze and then hop onto the elevator. You push the E button and the door begin to close. Joan looked worried, her eyes darting back and forth as if she was trying to make a decision when suddenly... I I'm coming with you! Wait, can you say you still hear me? Yep, okay, anyway. Oh yeah, if you guys want to know what's going on with this game, I got three or two videos on... Uh, words on YouTube. So in case you want to understand what's going on. I wonder if I can do a D20 roll here. Hold on. I'm curious. Cause I got stream elements up, but... Nope, okay. I, my, my day has been immensely <laughs> ruined because I can't do a D20 roll. It's fun. Anyway... Huh? At the last possible moment, Jim 
dashed forward, turning sideways just in time to slip through the gap between the closing doors. Hey, wait! Jimmy jammed his finger against the open button, but it was too late. Ah, oh, crap! It closed! The door had shut. He and June were in the elevator, and it was heading down to E deck. He was so surprised by June that he didn't even have the time to think about what wait waited him on the E deck. I can't just let you go alone, you know. Ah, jeez. The elevator stopped, and the door slid open. They attentively stepped out and looked around. It looks normal. No fish going about. Uh, no fish going about their lazy. <laughs> oh my god. English. Why do you fail me? Why do you fail me? Anyway. <coughs> mm. No fish going about their fishy business or a jellyfish floating lazy through the water. There was, however, a blowfish. Or at least something that looked very much like one. June's cheek were. <laughs> okay then, um. June's cheeks were puffed out and her mouth. a teeny intense frown. <laughs> I'll knock it off. It's just like I thought. This part hasn't flooded. Come on, just look around. There's no water here. June looked around nervously and then... <sighs> exhaled. You're right. It's not flooded at all. See? But there's a whole lot of water. Yeah. Right on top of us. What's gonna happen if the ceiling breaks? Junpei thought about but yeah, Junpei thought about that one. That for a moment. We'd probably die. <laughs> okay, casually you say, okay, we'll probably just die. Uh let me get a sub. Eh. There we go. Oh no! Don't be so casual about something like that! At any rate, we should probably go back as soon as we can, once we're done looking around down here. Lotus and Santa might already be back. Okay, good idea. Now then. Did they glance around the room they found themselves in? The first thing you noticed was a set of thick iron bars. They ran, they ran the length of the room, separating the left elevator from the right one. Iron bars. Well, we can't go over there. Right. I mean, unless you're like freaking super flexible and you can squeeze yourself right through those bars. Then maybe... In the corner of the room that housed the elevator, Junpei found an opening. Well... He walked up to it, stuck his head around the corner. It looks like there's a long straight hallway down this way. Something's written on the door at the end. Wait, is that... Let's check. Junpei and June set off down, down, set off down the hallway at a blisk clip. Somewhere between a run and a jog. Before long, they found themselves in front of the door. 
What it was a number written in bright red paint? Six. I knew it. This is a numbered door. And indeed, there was a red bolted to the right, uh, to that bolted to the wall right next to the door. But we can't do anything with only the two of us. We better head back and let everyone know. Yes. If we do, and turn around and head back to C deck. Wait, what's this? On their way back, Junpei noticed a map on the wall. Is this the map for E deck? I should take it with me. Huh, so you guys found door one. They went back with Santa and Lotus, who had explained what they found. Apparently, there was another number door on A deck, just like the one on E deck, beyond the door that that the Earth key opened. Oh god, train. Why? That train is loud. Here, let me move myself so you- I don't know if you guys can hear the train. Nope, okay, cool. Okay. According to Sand and Lowe's, there was a number one on the door. So now we've located two new doors. The six door and the one door. You know, it is interesting that E deck wasn't flooded. But was quiet for a moment, lost in thought. Well, we don't really know if all of E deck is safe. We only checked the area around the elevator. Even so, it's still very interesting. You said the six door was there, right? Yes. Then that means Zero planned all this out, even the sinking. That would have meant some pretty serious remodeling of the ship's interior. It's pretty mind-blowing when you think about it. Yeah, I wonder how long it took. I can't even imagine how much it must have cost. It would have been a ton, that's for sure. Well, that does go along with what Ace was saying. The most reasonable explanation would be that this was done by some organization with access to a whole lot of cash. Yes, it does make sense. The thought that made it, uh, that thought made them all go quiet for a moment. Hmm. 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 June bit her lip while Lola sighed softly to herself and Santa cracked a stiff neck. Stared off into the distance at nothing. Um. Yeah? Um, I don't think it's a very good idea to stay here. Jin looked at Junpei with the large, pleading eyes. Yeah, you're right. Ace and his team might be back already. Well, Jun, Junpei, and I should be able to open door one. Huh? You guys leaving me behind? 8 plus 6 plus 5 equals 19. Arrow 1 plus 9 equals 10. 1 plus 1. Oh, 1 plus 0 equals 1. Just kidding. Alright, let's go. Lotus words were all the imperious they needed. A large hospital room. They what? The moment they stepped inside, a tremendous voice echoed across the room. Hey! Where the hell did you guys go? It was Seven. Seven? Hmm. Um. Uh. Ace is right behind them, and, and Clover was behind Ace, although they seemed, seemed to be hanging back. What's wrong? It looked as though they were. there was something strange about them. Seven had a look of a man who had seen a ghost, Ace was just pale, and Clover looked as though she was only moments from passing out entirely. For a long moment, they simply stood there, looking at one another. Jimmy looked around nervously, waiting for someone else to speak. No one did. He looked at Seven. What happened? What the hell kind of question is that? Seven was trying very hard to be angry, but something had shaken him. Hard. His shoulders were trembling. His voice was stained. Snake was strained. Snake is. 
Seven couldn't finish. He just looked away, his face twisted by... Jimmy wasn't sure what. Instead, Ace spoke. He took a deep breath, closed his eyes, and spoke. Snake is... dead. He died, just as the ninth man did. <laughs> it was as if the air had suddenly been sucked out of the room. Jimmy felt his heartbeat quitting. And he realized he was having trouble breathing. He could feel a cold sweat beating on his forehead and neck. June, Santa, and Lotus looked the way he felt. All three fro all three were frozen in place. The face is white. Oh my god. That's not true, is it? Uh, we should make sure. Yeah, right. We should. They nodded to one another and headed for the number three door. Wait! Not that way! What? Why not? They stopped short, turned to look at Seven. He was pointing at the door with no number. I stuck a screwdriver in there to keep the door from closing all the way. It's not locked, so you can go in that way. Uh, where is, uh, where is he? The shower room. The left side of the hallway. I put a broom in there too to keep the door open. That means we can get in without going through the numbered door, right? Yeah, that's right. Then let's go. The new destination cleared, Junpei and his companions headed for the door with no number. Once in the hallway, it was easy to spot the middle door on the left wall. This wasn't open when we passed here before. But now, just as Seven had said, there was a room stuck between the door and the frame, keeping it open. Well, let's keep going. They looked at, they looked at it for a moment and then stepped inside. Oh, it smells horrible. Lois wrinkled her whole nose and covered her mouth in disgust. Even seeing the pinches now shut. Ugh, oh, yeah. This is pretty awful. I feel like I'm gonna puke. Which is as bad as they said, perhaps worse. A hideous smell filled the air, so thick they could almost taste it. It was sour, smelled of fish, fetus, and burnt meat. It worked it worked its way through Junpei's nose and down his throat. The pound gets the en entrance of his entrance to his stomach. <sighs> He put his hands over his mouth and started to keep what little was in his stomach where it belonged. Oh, hmm. Where is he? Where's Snake? They didn't have. Uh, yeah. They didn't have to wonder where the body was. There. There was blood everywhere. A few arms of the splatter reaching towards them as they walked through the door. All had. All. All. Yeah. All one had to do was follow the many radical arms to their source. The body itself was hidden being behind a divider. June, you should stay here. But... Oh no, my phone died. Oh no, why? Ah, uh, I can't see straight. What? Please, just do me a favor, okay? Alright? He didn't give her a chance to say no. He put his hand on his shoulder and as he shook her into the ground like a tent pole, turned and walked towards the end of the divider. I'm going in. It felt, it felt like it took an eternity for him to get there. <laughs> Santa Lewis followed. Timid and nervous as a pair of children. Eventually, they reached the divider. They looked at one another and nodded slowly. Jupe put his hands on the divider and peered around the corner. Ugh. For a moment, he forgot to breathe. He felt his heart collapse in his chest like an empty cigarette carton, and time froze. He knew in that instant that he would take the image before him to the grave. What was left of the body set in the sea of blood? Tongues of flesh torn from the body, set in, set in blood like tiny islands. The Great Red Sea. A vast rugged hole had been torn into the torso. What remained of his intestines spilled out of it like a fresh spaghetti. Small chunks of meat had splattered against the wall. They became stuck there as they dried. Oh god, not this word. The geolus of the yellowish bed had left trail for the two slugs. The gravity pulled them down the wall, even as they tried. Even as they tried to move it. <laughs> Just like Ace said. 
Santa's voice was strained. Jeffrey suspected he was holding down some vomit of his own. Just like the ninth man. The detonator in his bracelet set off the bomb in his gut. It looked as though the explosion had had, had been quite powerful. Oh god. The, the bone is coming out of his left arm. It's definitely an open fracture. His legs are both bent in odd, an odd, unnatural way. His left arm had split open, exposing a clearly white bone of his yolo. His braces lay next to him. It seemed to have hit the wall hard enough to have shattered the display, which lay on the ground in pieces. Oh, the face. It's horrible. Yeah, I can't even tell who it is. Half of his head had simply collapsed. The blood coating almost made it look like a raw pizza dough covered in tomato sauce. Oh, please, no. No. No! His clothing, too, was covered in blood. The burgundy tie, the white shirt, the jacket with the yellow pumping, and gray slacks. Uh, but the clothes are... They were all familiar to Junpei. No mistake about it. It's Snake. This voice was unnaturally deep and strained. And Junpei heard it catch in her throat. The squeal of the tortured metal made Jinpei's teeth curl. Suddenly, it's the noise, the noise a ghost would make. No matter how many times he heard it, he never got used to it. Every time he put it on the edge, he put him on the edge. It didn't help that there was a girl nearby who looked far more like a ghost than a living human should. It was Clover. <laughs> she sat on the edge of the bed, her head drooping listlessly onto her chest. Her eyes were blank, stare stared across the room at nothing. Her breathing was slow and mechanical. Aside from the rise of the fall of her chest, she didn't move. Junpei felt as, as if even a nudge might cause her to shatter into a thousand pieces. Snake was probably <laughs> murdered. My god, my sister. Alright, I'm gonna mute myself real quick. So I gotta switch phone. All right, I had to switch phones. Hold on, I gotta bring up my chat on this phone. And after I see what my friend texts me about.
Jesus is raining out there. Pretty good. And my cat just having a field day looking out the window. Alright, uh... Okay, Twitch, please. Thank you. Put it right here. Alright. Oops, that's not the button. Hello? Can anyone hear me? There we go. For a moment I didn't quite hear myself. As I switch around. So, uh, what are you doing, Grandolf? Uh, Grandolf, uh, Gluttony? God, I forgot how close you guys can look. Scary. Alright. Okay, everything's fixed. There we go. Okay, let me make sure I turn myself down a little bit. Alright. Chances are he was killed the same way the ninth man was. Someone lowered his voice, likely in effect to keep Clara from hearing what he had to say. There was four other people in the room with Junpei and Seven. Ace, Santa, June, and Lotus. Seven looked at each of them in turn and continued. It's pretty straightforward. Not that hard to figure out how they did it. First, the killers got Snake to authenticate on the red to open door three. That wouldn't make no sense, though. Because Snake seems like the guy that does not fall for stuff like that. Hmm. It's just that gut feeling. Then they shoved him into it, alone, and waited nine seconds for the door to shut. Once that door shut, it was all over for Snake, but he didn't give up. He probably knew it wouldn't do him any good, but he probably ran into the shower room looking for the dead. It was a small chance, but it wasn't like he had anything to lose. Unfortunately, it didn't work. The detonator is only deactivated if everybody who authenticated when they went in uses the dead. Snake was the only one who went through the door. And then, 81 seconds after he was shoved in, that happened. I see. So that's what you meant by killers, huh? You need at least three people to open one of the numbered doors, including Snake. It wouldn't open for Snake and a single killer. Yeah. That means we're looking at multiple perps here. Keep it across his arms and grunted. Well, just in case, I want to make sure. Let's say you're right. When do you think Snake was killed? When we all split up to look for the parts for the Reds, I think. Right after that was when we noticed he was gone. Then that means none of us have alibis. We were all off searching the rooms we'd been assigned, looking for those parts. Yeah. That means anybody could be a killer. W wait a minute. What are you talking about? June seemed shocked. How can you say that so casually? You're implying that one of us is a killer. Well, not just one of us. If I'm right, then at least two of us are murderers. Why don't you calm down a bit, Seven? What are you going to gain by being so suspicious? That's what Zero wants, you know? What 
Zero wants? Exactly. This game was set up by Zero, wasn't it? Any game has a winner and loser. Whoever makes it through door nine is a winner, and those who don't are the losers. Zero is trying to make us fight against one another for that victory. Then you're saying that Zero is trying to split us up by making us fight each other? Yes. That is why we can't let ourselves fall prey to suspicion. We have to trust one another and form a strong bond of friendship. Otherwise, we'll end up ensnared by Zero's manipulations. Then does that mean that the person who killed Snake... Yes. Almost certainly Zero himself. If there's anyone we should doubt, it should be Zero. He masterminded this game and kidnapped all of us. Doesn't it seem reasonable that he would have killed Snake as well? Hmm, good question. I think I hadn't really considered that. If Zero killed Snake, then Zero is on the ship with us. Junpei, was Zero still on the ship with them? Hmm. I mean, it's possible, but... I mean... I mean, it's possible. I mean, we haven't heard Zero for a while. That's the thing. My brain is like going overload moment. You know what? I'm gonna say yes because it's possible. Of course he was. That was obvious. But I don't... <sighs> so he was somewhere on the ship, but... But he had no idea where. And if he meddled to himself, lost in thought. Where could Zero be hiding? Zero went very quiet. That suddenly was cold and clammy. And Jimmy could feel it crawling, crawling across his back and around his throat. Again, he heard the ghosting, moaning noise. And moments later, a person who looked more ghost than human appeared. It was Clover. She looked on the floor as she spoke. Her voice was cold and monotone. I think... I think Zero is one of us. Every human body in the room froze. The only sound was the muffling rustling of breath. Eyes dart from face to face. One of those faces was the face of the jailer. But who? Was he one of them? Hmm. I mean, it is possible, but at the same time... Oh, I gotta sneeze. Here we go. Oh god. I hate season. Oh god, here we go. Another one. Oh 
Barbados. Oh no. I guess I'm gonna sneeze. Okay, I'm gonna blow my nose real quick. Cause man, all the sneezing. That's possible. Okay, whew. Sorry, I'm still catching my breath from all that sneezing I did. Huh? Like Clover said, Zero might be one of us. What are you saying, Jumpy? Didn't you hear what Ace said? Exactly. I said we shouldn't suspect one another for no reason. No reason. I've got a great reason. And what's that? The bracelets. He had his left arm. Why are the bombs in our bodies connected to the bracelets? You're all thinking Zero's hiding somewhere watching us, right? If he's doing that, then he could just detonate the bombs by remote control if someone did something they weren't supposed to. It would be a lot more precise and a lot easier. But if that's the case, then why is the bomb set off by the detonator in the bracelet? Huh. You got a point. What are you doing, Gluttony? Oh, you're checking a little phone piece? I'm not done. Try applying the same ideas to the Nonary game. All of the puzzles here run all by themselves. In other words, Zero doesn't have to be controlling them for the game to move forward. Why's that? Why would Zero bother to do something like that? Let me let the question hang in the air and look at the others. It will say to who answers. So let's say you and Clover are right. Zero's one of us. If that's the case, then it'd be really hard for him to keep track of all of us or control anything remotely. That's why all the puzzles run by themselves. That's what you're getting at, right? Yeah. Jinpei nodded. Seven, when we were talking earlier, you said any one of us could be Snake's killer, right? Yeah, something like that. All right then, I've got a question for you, Ace. You said something like Zero must be the one who killed Snake, right? Yes, something like that. I can't think of any other explanation. So what do we get if we combine those? They fit together pretty well, I think. Something like this. Whoever killed Snake is Zero. Hence, Zero is one of us. Seven and Ace's theories aren't mutually exclusive. They actually complement each other pretty well. At least they do if Zero is one of us. No one spoke. Their faces were grim, but Jibbe wasn't sure if they believe him or not. Finally, Lil spoke up. What were his motives? His motives? Yes, isn't that pretty important? Why would Zero want to hide as one of us? Oh, well, that's because... Don't be joked. He hadn't thought about that. He had to be honest with himself. He had no idea. I... don't know. Go to side. Well, so much for making a persuasive argument, Junpei. 
In other words, you only had circumstantial evidence. I don't really think that's enough to go on, you know? Ah. Zuby wasn't Paisley. Was Paisley aware of their eyes on him? And they're just horrible. He tried to find something else, anything else to look at. Then in that horrible silence. Hey! Stop trying to fucking bust my chips open, you fucker! Oh no, he already did bust a hole in it. You bastard! Damn it, ghost! I remember to eat my chips. <laughs> they heard a bell begin to ring. It was the clock at the central staircase. It's three in the morning. That means we have three hours left. Then we need to move now. Seven, Clover, Junpei, I know how you feel, but you do understand that right now it's important we trust one another, don't you? I honestly, I don't feel like I should trust you, buddy. You're right, but... Jimmy couldn't bring himself to respond. He swallowed the words he went to say. Inside, Seven and Clover remained similarly silent. Their eyes were looking at something somewhere else, very far away. We must go. We have very little time left. These words put their feet to moving. They all knew where they were going. Our next destination is Mercury. But maybe you and June should check it out first, and then report back to us. All right. Let's go, June. Right! Here it is! It's set. It's set. Bolted to the wall near the stairs that led to the casino in the kitchen between the two elevators. The Mercury card reader. We're using the card Seven gave us, right? Yeah. I found it when we were checking out the shower room. I think Seven said something like that. Anyway, let's see what happens. Jinpei slid the card for the reader. The light on the reader turned green and made a teeny electrical noise. Electronic I noise. I guess the elevator works now. Jumpy, I know it's only the two of us, but let's do our best. What's with you all of a sudden? Well, I'm happy we were put together. Uh, you know it's just for searching E-Deck, right? Even so, I'm glad I'm with you. Oh. First, we need to find out if the elevator comes up full of water. Just like we did before. Oh, here it is. I knew it. It's not wet at all. Let's go. Yes. Once it had been checked for water, Jinpei and June stepped into the elevator. Look! Nearly all of the buttons are destroyed. Yeah, only the C and bottom button can be pushed. We're on C deck right now, so the only one we can choose is bottom. Yeah. Well, let's try it out. Jinpei hit the bottom button. to move downward. Man, if I ever was on an elevator in a fucking escape room, I think I'd rather die, cause man, elevators can go out anytime. I don't like that, I'd rather die a natural way, not being crushed to death by an elevator. Oh, hold on. Oh, I got a tornado watch. I got level. We got a tornado watch till eight. PM. Ain't that lovely? Oh, so this is the bottom deck. It 
I stepped off and saw the, that the hallway to their right ended somewhere between 20 and 25 feet from them. The hallway in front of them was a dead end. But not regal, but not a regular door. Hey, over there. Dead end. This is a numbered door. This is the eighth one we found. There were two numbered doors on B deck near the central staircase. They were doors four and five. Three more in the large hospital room. Hold on. Hold on, we gotta pause. Doors three, seven, and eight. And the door we found on E deck, and the door Lotus and Santa found on. It was a six on the door on E deck, and a one on the door on A deck. Four, five, three, seven, eight, six, one. And now, door two stood in front of you. Guys. That means. Do you think the next door we find? Hold on, I want to see how much time I'm gonna put. Hmm. <sighs> okay, I gotta cancel the stream. I mean, I got pretty far in. It just sucks. But it's alright. Alright. And in stream.